Hi guys, today we are going to take the data from a contact form and store them in a JSON file. Let me quickly show you. I'm going to enter an email, a subject, and a quick message. I press the submit button and the data from the form are successfully stored in a JSON file. The file is named messages.json. In the file, we see that our message is stored as an object inside an array. We have the email, the subject, the text message, and also we have a timestamp on when we receive that message. Now, our application will also have an inbox page in which we have the option to delete a message or reply. So, without wasting any more time, let's start by showing you the files needed to build this application. We are going to have an index file to house the contact form, an inbox.php file to fetch and display the messages from the JSON file, a script.js file to write our JavaScript code, a functions.php file to write the PHP functions needed for our application, we have the messages.json file to save the messages from the form, and a styles.css file to style and structure the application. As you see, I have already typed the code so we don't waste any time, so we don't waste time with CSS. I will show you what's important in the CSS code when it's needed. So let's jump to the index file and start coding. First of all, I will create a form element. Inside, I will add a title. Next, I will add the email input field. Next, the subject input field. We are going to have a text area for the text message, a submit button, a paragraph with a class of success to display the success message and a paragraph with a class of error to display any error that may occur during the form's data validation. We are going to determine when to display which in our PHP code. Let's quickly see the contact form in our browser. And nice. Now let's go to the functions.php file to write our first function. Our first function will be the store message function. This function will insert the data from the form to the JSON file. The function takes three arguments, the email, the subject, and the message. The first thing that I will do inside the function is to create an associative array that will hold the arguments. I will name the array new message. Inside the array, I will create key value pairs. First for the email, next for the subject, next for the message, and lastly, I will use the date function to create a timestamp. The format parameters within the date function will output the following date structure. Next, I will loop through the new message array and check if every input field has a value. If there is an empty input field submitted, the function will return a message that says all fields are required and the process stops here. Next, I'm going to sanitize each input field's value. I don't want to save harmful code in the JSON file. For that, I will use the array map function. The array map function takes as its first argument a callback function and an array as its second argument. In our case, the new message array. The array map function runs a callback function for each element in an array and creates a new array from the results. To access each value in an array, we have to pass in the callback function an argument. Now the item variable will access each value in the new message array. The callback function will return the HTML special characters function, which will sanitize each value and store it in the sanitized message array. Now all our input values are sanitized. Next, it's time to store the sanitized message in the, J in the JSON file. First, I will check if the JSON file is empty using the file size function and pass in as an argument the path to the JSON file. The file size function returns the bytes of a file. So if it is zero, that means that the file is empty and this is our first record. So we have to create an array to hold our first message. But if, if the file is not empty, I will use the JSON decode function to convert the data from the JSON file to an array so we can work with them. As a parameter, I will insert the file get contents function to fetch the data from the file. And as a second parameter, I will pass in the keyword true. The true keyword will decode the data to an array. If we omit it, the JSON decode function will return an object. And I will store the array in a variable named old records. 
Next, using the array push function, I will add the sanitized message to the old records array. After that, I will use the data to save variable to assign the old records array. The data to save variable is acting as a generic placeholder. If the condition is true and this is the first message, the data to save variable is holding the new message inside an array. Else, the data to save variable is holding the old messages from the file plus the new one. Hope it doesn't confuse you. Now, before we insert the data to the JSON file, we have to convert them to a JSON string. So, I will use the JSON encode function and I will pass in the data to save array. And as a second argument, I will pass in the JSON pretty print combined with the JSON unescaped Unicode constants. The JSON pretty print constant will structure the data in the file in an easy readable format, and the JSON unescaped Unicode will make sure that we can read non Latin characters in the file. And I will store the result in the encoded data variable. Next, I will use the file put contents function to store the data in the JSON file. The lock X flag makes the process secure. It doesn't allow any other request or process to access the file until the current operation is complete. Now, if the recording fails, we return an error, else we return the string success. OK, we are done with the store message function. Now let's go to the index file to finish the code. I'm going to scroll to the top of the file, open PHP tags, and I'm going to require the functions.php file so we can access the functions that we are going to write there. Next, I will check if the form is submitted. I will check if the post variable holds a key named submit, which is the submit button's name attribute. If the condition is true, I will call the store message function and I will pass in as arguments the submitted email, the subject, and the message. And I will store whatever the function returns in a variable named response. Next, I will go to each input field and set the value attribute to the corresponding submitted value. This way, if there is an error when the form is submitted, the inserted values will stick and the user does not have to enter them again. First the email, next the subject, and lastly the message. The add character in front of every variable tells the server not to throw a warning when a variable is not defined. Next, let's handle the success and error message. I will open PHP tags under the submit button and in an if statement I will check the response variable. If it is equal to success, I will display the success message, else I will display whatever message the response variable holds. At last, I will define the response variable above the if statement so we don't get a warning from the server. OK, now it's time to test the code. Let's open the browser and send a message to the JSON file. I will enter an email, a subject, and a text message. Press the submit button and the message is stored successfully in the JSON file. Let's open the JSON file. And nice, here is our message. But there is something here that I don't like. I don't want the values to stick in the input fields after a successful submission. So let's fix it. Let's go back to the index file and under the line that we execute the function, I will check if the response variable is equal to success. If this is true, I will unset the super global post variable. Let's see if it works. Let's change the subject and the message. Nice, we have a successful operation and this time the values in the input fields are gone. And if we go to the JSON file, we see that the second message is added in the file. OK, we completed the first step, which was to insert the message in the JSON file. Now let's, code, let's go and code the inbox.php file. As you can see, nothing is going on here, it's just a basic HTML structure. As we did in the index file, we are going to open PHP tags at the top of the file and require the functions.php file. Next, I will execute the getMessages function, which we will create right now in the functions.php file. I will say function getMessages, and inside the function I will get the data from the JSON file and store them in the messages variable. 
Next, I will convert the JSON data to an array. Next, I will reverse the order of the messages in the array because I want to display the newest first. At last, I will return the reverse array. Looking at the code, I see that I, it took me four lines of code to write this simple task. Let me show you how we can write this above code in one statement. I will say return array reverse. As an argument, I will pass in the JSON decode function, in which I will pass in the file get contents function and the keyword true to convert the data to an array. Looks much nicer. Okay, now let's go to the inbox file to display the messages. I will create a div element with a class of message wrapper. The first element inside the message wrapper will be a paragraph to display the number of messages. For that, I will use the count function and pass in as an argument the messages variable. Next, I will open PHP tags and I will loop through the messages array to display each message. Inside the foreach function, I will escape PHP so I can insert HTML code. I will create a div element with a class of message. This element will hold each message. First, I will display the from address. I will create an a tag and in the href attribute, I will say mail to and I will append the email to reply to. Also, I will display the email address. Let's quickly see this. Let's open a new tab and navigate to the inbox.php page. And here we see the number of messages, which is 2. And if I click on the link, the operating system will open the default email client, which in my case is Thunderbird. Next, in another paragraph, I will display the subject. And beneath the subject, I will display the received on timestamp. Next, I will display the text message. Let's see this again in the browser. Nice, we see the email address, the subject, the timestamp, and the text message. Now let's continue by coding the delete message action. So, under the text message, I will add a button with a class of delete button and set the text to delete message. Under the button, I will create a div element with a class of confirm deletion. Inside the div container, I will display a paragraph asking the user if they are sure of this action. Under the paragraph, I will put a link that says yes, and after that, I will have a button that says cancel. And outside the div container, I will have a paragraph with a class of error to display any error may occur during the deletion process. Let's give the button a class of cancel. Okay, let's see what we have in the browser. We see only the delete message button. It's a button, but I have styled it as plain text. The div container is not showing up because I have set the display property to none in the CSS file. We are going to change the display property to block using JavaScript to display the element. Okay, now I'm going to jump to the delete message button and I will assign a non-click event listener to it, which will trigger the show confirm dialog function. I will pass in the function as an argument the keyword this. The this keyword gives us access to the methods and properties of the object to which it belongs. In this case, the this keyword belongs to the delete message button. Now let's go to the JavaScript file to write the function. I will say function, show confirm dialog, and I will pass in as an argument the element variable. Next, I will take the element variable and I will call the next element symlink property. I will say dot style, and I will set the display CSS property to block. This will unhide the confirm deletion div container. Let's see once again our HTML code. Here is our button, and here is its next element symlink. So when we click on the button, we target the confirm deletion div container and change the display property. Okay, but for our function to work, we have to include in the file a script tag that points to the JavaScript file. Also, let's change the typo that I made on the function's name. And we are good to go. Let's check out our code in the browser. Nice. Let's click on the second one. Great. Okay, now let's continue by coding the cancel action. I will add an on-click event listener on the cancel button, which will trigger the hide confirm dialog function. 
And again, I will pass in as an argument the keyword this. Now let's go to the JavaScript file to write the hide confirm dialog function. I will say function hide confirm dialog and as an argument I will pass in a variable named element as I did in the previous function. Again, I will take the element variable, but this time I will target the parent element and set the display property to none. This will hide the confirm deletion div container. Let's see again our HTML code. Here is our cancel button, and when we click on it, we target its, par its parent element and hide it. Let's see this in action. Let's reload the page. And nice. Let's test the second one. Great. Okay, we have one task left to code, and that is the delete action. I will go to the yes a tag and set its href attribute to inbox.php. This means that when we click on the link, we are sending a GET request to the same page. Along with a GET request, we will also send a query string. The query string starts after a question mark. The query string that I'm going to write consists of two parts. In the first part, I will say confirm deletion, and in the second part, I will append the key variable. The key variable is the variable inside the for each loop and is associated with the corresponding message. This means that I need the key to delete a message. You will see in a minute. Now I will scroll to the top of the page and I will check if there is a GET request that holds the confirm deletion key. This means that a user has clicked on the YES link to delete the message. Next I will store the key that comes along with a GET request in a variable named array key. Next I will execute the delete message function and I will pass in two parameters. The first parameter is the messages array and the second is the array key. And I will store whatever the function will return in the response variable. Now let's go to the functions.php file to write the delete message function. I will say function delete message and as arguments I will pass in the messages and the key variables. Next, I will remove the message from the messages array using the unset function by targeting the specific message using the key variable. Next, I will encode the messages array to a JSON string and store the result to the encoded data variable. Next, I will write the data back to the JSON file and I will store the returned value in the response variable. Now, I will check if everything went well. If the response variable is not true, I will return an error, else I will return a header to reload the page. In this way, we remove the query string from the browser's URL bar. And so, we are sure that we don't send the same query string to the server and get an error if someone uses the browser's reload button to refresh the page. I also forgot the dollar sign in front of the response variable. Ok, now let's jump back to the inbox.php file to finish the code. I will use the response variable to echo out the error if there is one. And also we will define the response variable above the if statement so we don't get a warning from the server. And that's it. Let's go to the browser and delete a message. Let's first reload the page and let's delete a second one. Nice, the message is deleted. And if we open our JSON file, we will see there the same thing. Nice. And that's it, guys. Our application is completed. But I have another video for you in which we will fetch the data from a MySQL table and store them in a JSON file. Check it out. That's basic stuff that we need to know. So, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like. See you in the next one.